اوكي اوكي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وليد الهاشم من المملكه العربيه السعوديه في نقطة إضافية أضيفها للأخوة اللي طرحوها بخصوص صعوبات الرصد الهلال أهل الضعيفة أو النحيفة يعني وهي نقطة أن أجهزة التلسكوب عند تركيبها تكون مبرمجة لأجل أن تعد قبلها بيوم أو يومين وبعض الأحيان تقلبات الجوية لا تسمح بالذات لأجهزة التلسكوب ذات التوجيه الإلكتروني والمطلوبة في التصوير أيضا في استخدام التصوير أو فقط في الرصد المجرد يعني أو البث أو أي شيء آخر في نقطة إشكاليتين أنا أطرحها بالنسبة للصعوبات الإشكالية الأولى تتعلق بنظام التوجيه في التلسكوب المعتمد على تحديد المكان الجغرافي معتمدا على الشمال المغناطيسي وليس الشمال الجغرافي اللي هو محور دوران الأرض وهناك فرق بينهم معظم التلسكوبات تصنع في الولايات المتحدة وهي على خط واحد مع كندا وفي تقع شمال كندا هذه نقطة الشمال المغناطيسي وليس لديهم أي مشكلة بالنسبة للشمال الجغرافي لأن على خط واحد فما يفرق بالنسبة لهم يعني قريب جدا بالنسبة للدول الإسلامية بعيدة عن هذا المكان فيجد فرق الفرق هذا يجب أن يصحح يدويا والتصحيح اليدوي له عيوبه النقطة الثانية باختصار وهي نقطة وجود الأفق لما يكون الهلال في الأفق الأفق زي ما تفضل الأخ المحاضر الأول مشكورا أن الأفق يكون ثلاثة أبعاف طولة عنه لما يكون يرصد في مستوى عمودي في السماء وهذا يعمل عمل العدسات يعمل حيود بسيط وإذا أنت استخدم جهاز تلسكوب ذو تكبير جيد راح ياثر عليك في الموقع يعني ولو بشكل بسيط. نفس الاجهزه المبرمجه ما تظهر تدخل في في حسبانها الحيود اللي ممكن يصير للضوء من خلال وجوده في الافق وليس وجوده بشكل عمودي يعني لما ترصد شيء بشكل عمودي يكون واضح ودقيق التوجيه. طيب لما يكون افقي اوكي شكرا جزيلا. اوكي <تصفيق> Thank you very much for a very enlightening uh, uh, presentation. I have one question first to both uh, Jim and uh, Martin. Uh, what filters have you used other than a red filter? And what were the advantages of any other filter other than red if it was used? And uh, if I might ask the second one for Brother Kamaruddin, when you are using a webcam and you're seeing the image on a TV, is it possible that you can actually see a hilal with naked eye, whereas you will not be able to see that on a TV screen because of a lower contrast? Jazakallah. هو حسب تصوري أو حسب ممارسة الأجهزة أن هاي الأجهزة تأخذ هذا في الاعتبار تأخذ الانكسار ما بين على حسب الأفق الصورة وكذلك أيضا الشمال المغناطيسي والشمال السماوي يعني بالنسبة لدولنا الفارق قد يكون ما كثير نص درجة في هذاك الحدود بينما إذا اقتربت أنت من يعني نقول من كندا من شمال أمريكا إلى آخر يكون تقترب من نقطة الشمال المغناطيسي فهنا يكون فارق كبير جدا ما بين الشمال الصحيح أو السماوي والشمال المغناطيسي فأعتقد بالنسبة لنا إحنا دولنا البعيدة عن القطبين في المشكلة تكون أقل من دول أخرى وحسب علمي أيضا الحيود التلسكوبات حاليا معظمها تتبع هي الإشكالية تكون في البداية عملية الموازنة والتأكد أن التلسكوب ثابت إذا باغي إجابة أكثر تفصيلا اختار لمن من المتحدث باغي إجابة منه Like, would you like to address the first question okay. which about the north, uh, magnetic uh, north? The magnetic and north. Okay. I think uh, uh, any any su any sufficiently magnetic north. Uh, this is only relevant for a mobile system. If you know where you are, and GPS gives you that precisely enough, 
then, then you can set up your system. You just need one or two nights to align your mount properly towards the pole star, which is not affected by anything. And then you can set up your system uh, as, as precise as you, as, require, as you require it. So only with a fully mo only if you would need a fully mobile telephone, te telescope system where you can drive to a location and start observing immediately, then you might have problems. Otherwise, if you, have a, if you have a fixed setup or if you drive to a loca location where you know beforehand where you're going to go, then this should not be a problem. You would like to address uh, the atmospheric question. Atmospheric uh, yeah, atm okay, atm atmospheric refraction is, is more difficult because that changes with the weather, but that, re that only gets really, really uh, strong, the effect, if you go really get, get really close to the horizon. By simply making your field of view large enough, uh, you, can, you can solve the problem, and there are models in the professional astronomy field for modeling refraction, which just gives you a good average. So I think that topic also can be solved for the usual cases if your field of view is not extremely small. So usually if your field of view is half a degree in size, which is pro appropriate for the crescent, then you should not have a real problem if you use the, the usual compensation for, your, for refraction. With refraction, if you're pre-pointing, then you're using objects that are undergoing the same refraction for the object that you're aiming at, or that, in this case, the moon. So essentially, there is no difference. Okay, so uh, regarding filters, uh, Jim is not using filters for visual observation because the human, human eye has to be able to use that filtered image, and he has not yet found it useful to do so. For imaging, the effect of filters is very strong. Um, if you have, if you have a, a situation with blue skies, then if you remove that blue light by using a red filter or an even stronger infrared filter, which goes to even longer wavelengths, then you get less and less scattering. So by using long wavelength filters, red or even infrared, you, you get a far better contrast image. Simply, you could simply use a filter which only removes blue and maybe starts in the green with transmission, and that all, already gives you an improvement. But the, the longer your wavelength is, the less scattering you have in the atmosphere, and the better it is. If you still have whitish color of the sky, it depends on the kind of scattering mechanism. If you have multi, multiple scattering, then you have a whitish sky, and then, it won't, then filters won't probably help you anymore. طيب قبل الإجابة الأخيرة أودي أشوف الأيدي اللي أبغى أسئلة الأخ اللي عنده الميكروفونات لو سمحتوا. I need to answer one of the questions. Okay, um, the question was: Is it possible to uh, observe the hilal by the naked eye, but yet not be able to pick it up on a, a, a screen? Um, now, to improve contrast, uh, I do use uh, UV blocking um, uh, in front of the um, camera lens. Um, we have limited uh, chance to do the experiment because of um, uh, the adverse weather conditions. So all the observation I've done to date was uh, what was visible by the naked eye. Um, it may be possible uh, to um, uh, obtain a better contrast uh, using uh, the method uh, the Martin used uh, on this. Uh, but from an Islamic point of view, it is the witness of the person citing it is important, not what is being shown on the screen. So on the screen is a supportive information, and we must not forget that uh, this whole observation is going to be taken over by machines, because that is not going to be acceptable uh, in the law of uh, court of law court of law a person or who fulfills the characteristic of a, a, a giver of witness has to say that he has cited it so even if we are observing a group of us in the field and we are unable to show what we see by the naked eye on the screen we can say on the microphone we are able to see it so i think that uh, will uh, answer your question yes. uh, دكتور أحمد الرفعي من الهيئة القومية للاستشارة عن بعد من مصر 
for the for the first uh, paper, I want to to tell to ask the doctor. He used the same telescope in order to track the the stars, the star patterns, in order to determine uh, uh, the correct direction. But why not to use a star tracker and to make some coincidence between the axes of the of the star tracker and the telescope? And they are available to, to, to determine attitudes in very correct ways. Not to use the same telescope and follow certain pattern. Of course, it is correct, but maybe it will be simplified the process in tracking the, the in determination of the, of the attitude of direction of moon exactly. I have. Uh, oh, I have been with others who have used go-to telescopes. That's what you're referring to, the star tracker uh, options on the telescope, and find that they're not precise enough. They will generally maybe get your object in the field of view, mm. but uh, you know that's not good enough. And if they aren't in the field of view and it's something that you can't see until it's going to get darker or a little higher or something, uh, then you really need to have it in the center mm. or as close to the center as possible. Mm. I don't know. Maybe they're better now, but I haven't used one in several years. But when they first came out, oh, they were just more trouble than they were worth. Of course, I am talking about uh, night vision, not uh, uh, light, uh, light, day, daylight uh, vision. Uh, Star Tracker will work good in, in night visions. It's, it's more accurate now mm. than it yes, used to be? Mm. Okay. I, I have not found that to be the case, but uh, if it is, that's great. You know, if, if, but um, I know now that you can use the uh, star tracking with the GPS inserted so yes. you don't have to set it at north. Uh, you know, again, I'm not familiar with how precise those are. But... I still would have my doubts because the precision that I use involves that uh, um, refraction. Uh, the first, the 96, 1996 moon that I saw, I set up the night before and I watched maybe seven or eight fields go through. And each time I had to adjust the declination a little bit. And I kept wondering, what's going on? Who's, you know, I move it just exactly right, and the next time it's too high. And I have to go down a little bit, and then it's too low or too high again or something. What's going on? And I finally realized that was refraction that was affecting that. A, stra a star tracker can reach uh, about six arc seconds nowadays of uh, pointing accuracy. But the star tracker would not take into Okay. Hello, uh, Marwan Shweki, uh, planetarium, planetarium director, Muscat. My question is to Martin. Uh, you said uh, when the sky is uh, uh, white, blue then we can use a red uh, filter to get more contrast uh, to uh, photograph the moon. Uh, what in, in, the re in this region, in uh, the Gulf, sometimes the sky is really white. So even you cannot rec recognize the, the bluish, bluish color. So what, so what filter is recommended? Is the same color or something else? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, if you have really whitish skies, like I saw them yesterday, for example, uh, then I know of no filter that would help you. So then the only thing that can, can help you is this massive contrast stretching in the usual white light data. I would still use a, I would still use a, a red filter in order to remove the blue stuff because it's def the, 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 be, be, be behind this whitish scattered stuff, there will be blue scatter stuff and removing that will help but the main if you have such bad skies then only then only the only choice is either try to see whether the digital whether the contrast enhancement in the software itself is good enough or you have to find a better location there are there simply are occasions where when the sun 
this disappears in the haze 10 degrees above the horizon, then nothing is going to help you. You just have to find a better location. Thank you. Thank you. Further? My name is uh, Suleiman Ghani from the UK. Uh, what I find quite interesting is in relation to the presentations now, which was very, very useful, and also the previous one which showing us the visibility charts. What I've noted is that when you showed, uh, I mean, the different colors denoting when it will be impossible to sight the Hilal from the previous presentations and the relation to these uh, telescopes that have been used and magnified, can we possibly say as a suggestion that we have many observatories in different parts of the world, especially there in Mecca and Medina and different parts, so when there is naked eye sightings and also the fact that we know that there are certain times we say in Arabic mustahil, impossible to sight the Hilal with the naked eye. So using these telescopes, using all of these optical aids uh, to negate the sightings or claim sightings by the naked eye. So that, uh, I mean, that's what I'm trying to establish. Is it okay, uh, especially for Kamaruddin, that you have the experience that by using the telescopes, when it is not possible to sight it, and yet there are people claiming sightings when the skies are clear. Uh, so that was my point to, to really emphatically state using telescoping and optical aid to negate the false sightings. Actually, this uh, is a juristic uh, question. Um, the job of a qadi in a Muslim country or a council of scholars in the non-Muslim country should collect all the sighting and non-sighting observation reports with the character reports of the individuals and then they will make a decision. So if, say, you are in Mecca and all the ten observatories, Hilal observatories, reported negative sighting even uh, with telescope knowing exactly where it is and two Bedouin from Riyadh come to the justice minister and say, we have sighted, it is up to the judge to reject or not Quite often they accept it, and this is the problem that is being caused in UK because three, four hours later, in our own horizon or in our neighboring horizon, we are unable to sight the Hilal. So I think uh, this is a, a scholaristic uh, answer, and I will leave it to the ulama to uh, uh, add to that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, a small comment I have been told uh, a month ago. An astronomer, he went to the high mountain and put a telescope and everything perfectly aligned. He can see the stars or even Venus at that time. And then, but at the moment, when he's supposed to shift the telescope to see the thin crescent, some cloud drifted to the horizon, so it blocked the view. And later on, there is a report that somebody from similar, very close places, they managed to sight it with the human eye. So that means, really, you cannot trust all of these observations. You need to really to double check it. Why this is a person with a telescope pointing exactly the same place, you know where to look or something, and he was not able to see it. And normal people, like we saw in this picture, before the zooming, none of us able to spot where the And only after magnification, only after magnification, the crescent will become visible. So I think we still we need uh, can I, some can criteria I, I, to double check that. Uh, can I add to that? Some people think cloudiness is a phenomena that they, uh, can be uh, covered the whole world at the same time. Now, we should know that cloudiness is a local phenomena. If one place is cloudy, other place may not be. So that is why it is important to have observers as many different places and as far apart uh, uh, as possible. So like uh, the chef said here, uh, one person with the telescope, the cloud came in front and he couldn't sight it. That does not mean the crescent wasn't there. But if, uh, if we had uh, many hundreds of people looking and nobody sighting, then that is uh, uh, something. So my point is cloudiness is a local phenomenon. The whole world is not cloudy at the same time. Yes, Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Abdul Qadir Abed from Jordan. As to Martin, why why is it that we can we can uh, uh, photograph the crescent 4.5 degrees or 4.6 degrees during the day, while we are unable to do that unless unless it is more than 6.5 degrees during the night? 
Thank you. I, I don't know whether it is simply imp I, I simply have not had I had only one occasion where I could actually try to observe the crescent in the evening when it got close to, to the horizon. I had new because it's far it's far easy. It, the horizon is very often obstructed when you look, live in a city, and so I have to carry. I, I carried all my stuff to a mountain in order to be able to actually see the horizon and do this observation. So I, I wouldn't say that it's easier to see the crescent when it's up there compared to the horizon. That's just my. That's just my. Yeah, to a certain degree. Uh, well, there, there, there's, there definitely, definitely, the scattering is far more intense near the horizon. So that's that's one of the reasons. If, if you, in, up in the sky, you have a blue sky, and so you can uh, use your filters to the fullest to the fullest power and remove this blue scattered light. Near the horizon, it usually gets whitish, and scattering gets more intense, and that's more un, unfortunate. I simply, I have a lot of experience with daytime observations. So the 4.5. Uh, the 4.5 degrees are, have, are a result of more observations than my 6.5, because Jim has done 6.5 uh, degrees elongation in, in, the, in the evening with uh, numerous attempts, and I only had one attempt where I could try to do the same. So I would, I would, I would expect, I would expect that, it, that you should be able to reach similar values with, in both situations, but that daytime actually is somewhat easier. Because you're just you're looking straight up out of the atmosphere, you don't have that much air column above you, and if you look close to the horizon, you're looking through hundreds of kilometers of air of of dust, and that will make it more difficult. Give you something. Okay. Uh, now. Nah. I want a question. Uh, there's somebody here. In the back. Here's one of you. Okay, go ahead. I don't see him. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Aziz Khalidi. I'm from Ekra TV in London. Um, certainly, this conference is worth having. Um, in, in the UK, we are experiencing a massive problem. We're having Pakistanis celebrate on their own, the Moroccans on their own, and everyone else on their own. So sometimes the Eid runs for three days rather than probably one day. Now, I'm, I'm just hoping from this conference and uh, please give me your comment if you can, that we can come up with some kind of a resolution for um, you know, uniting on, on this issue. Okay, although the question is uh, not in this session, but generally the whole theme of this conference and other conference basically to address this issue. All this effort basically to address that issue. Hoping that we'll find. Tom. الأخوة اللي عندهم أسئلة يرفعوا يديهم حتى أستطيع أشوفهم وأنه ودي الميكروفونات من وقت بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سؤالي للأخ قمر الدين إنه خاصة تكلم عن فئتين من الجماعات العلماء الفئة يعني الفئة الأولى قال إنه متفقين مع الحسابات الفلكية إذا يعني ينطبق مع الرؤية والفئة الثانية من العلماء خاصة الأحناف هو قال أنه يعني بزي يعتمدون على الحسابات الفلكية فأليس من الأفضل أنه خاصة الجماعة الأولى من العلماء يعني هم شرطهم على أساس يشترطون أنه يكون الحسابات الفلكية ينطبق مع الرؤية الشرعية لأن حتى إذا مثلا في الأعوام اللي السنوات اللي مضت دائما كان في اختلاف يعني مرات كنا نسمع أن الحسابات الفلكية يعني عندهم حساب والرؤية الشرعية ما كان ينطبقوا مع بعض فإذا واحد يعني ينظر إلى الجماعة الأولى فأن الشرط يعني لازم يعني يرجع للشرع أن يكون بالرؤية الشرعية وجزاكم الله خير كلمك الله أفضل الأسئلة تكون في موضوع الجلسة لأنه مثل ما قلنا في جلسات أخرى ستناقش هذا الموضوع نأخذ أسئلة في حالة حصلنا الوقت بنرجع للسؤال إن شاء الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بشير جراح أزهر البقاع لبنان إذا كان الحديث الشريف يقول صوموا لرؤيته وأفطروا لرؤيته الرؤية هنا حصلت بالتلسكوب والمرصد أو بالسي سي دي أليس هناك آية تقول فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون فإن أهل الذكر هنا هم أهل البصريات أهل العلوم التقنية الحديثة في البصريات فإليهم يرجع الأمر والله أعلم طيب أنا بعني بعض الأسئلة اللي هي العلاقة بالجلسة أكثر 
وهذا الموضوع بين جلسة جلسة ثانية غير جلسة الرصد. This is a thing for for him. When you use telescope and maybe you use the sun as a guide, sometimes you are using solar filter. How that will going to affect the focusing of the telescope, the telescope when you move the filter, solar filter? Okay. Um, I can I can answer that for you. Yeah, because you're okay. So the question was how does how, how does the use of solar filters, which you need you need, when you use the sun in order to align your telescope, you have to use solar filters in order to prevent eye damage or damage for your equipment. And how does the question was how does the use of the solar filter affect your focusing? So is the focus changed when you remove it? Well, you, of course, you should use a solar filter that goes in front of the telescope so that the light does not even enter. And if that filter is properly built which most of them are today, then it should not uh, affect focus at all. Because it, it, the, the filter in front is in parallel light, and so the focus is not changed. That should be the answer. OK, <coughs> second question. Now, the, to achieve a very good image processing, or easy, you need very accurate uh, mount. And in this case, so both the crescent are at the same location in the image, same yeah. frame, position, the relative position in the frame. How we achieve that, or is it uh, the software that you are using for stacking the image automatically will look for the crescent and then accordingly it will shift the image and then stack them? Uh, okay, uh, uh, the precise tracking of the moon actually has to be done without even being able to, to track it because that's a very basic problem. The crescent is so faint in each, might be so faint in each individual image that you cannot use the image itself to track the crescent. So your mount in itself must be stable enough, but uh, with modern mounts, um, if you're talking about high class, then you get any amount of tracking accuracy that you want. A modern mount can track the moon, can track anything that moves regularly by tenths of arc seconds. So that is not the problem. Uh, it is, it is, a, of, and if you have a high frame rate, you get your 100 or 200 or 300 images in just a few seconds, and then you don't, so you don't, the, the mount doesn't have that much time to, uh, to drift somewhere. So for example, if you're using 15 frames per second, and if you want 150 images to stack, you just have to wait 10 seconds and you have all the images you need. So uh, that's not much of a problem if your camera is of sufficient speed. Okay, the other question is uh, maybe to all of us, uh, all of you, sorry. The following, the telescope aperture. Clearly when it comes closer to the horizon, a lot of scatter will happen. So you will end up with a very small amount of the remaining, remaining of the light coming from the moon. So is it the best to increase the aperture to collect more crescent light, or that will be affected by the seeing. The more, the, the bigger the aperture, the more effect in the, of the seeing. So that one question I would like to get answered. And then relative to this one, the aperture of the, or the sensitivity of the CCD. How that, if, uh, clearly in your observation, you saw us very clear, visible crescent. If you would like to go down to a very thin one, will the webcam will be sufficient for that? And also, Another question will come to you later. Yeah, and who will start? Well, uh, it depends is probably the best answer. For my, exper for my experiments, increasing the diameter has not made much not made much sense. I got, uh, from, for my camera, which does 15 frames per second, I don't, I, would, I can't go with the exposure beyond 1 15th of a second because then I would lose the frame rate. And I have always had enough light with my small optics to, to be sufficient for that. Um, if you increase the diameter of your optics, you gather more of seeing effects, so you get more blurring effects, and this might harm you. Generally, the contrast is not enhanced by the, by the, 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 the contrast that you get is only, is not enhanced by the diameter of the optics. You need quality of the optics, good color correction, but contrast is not, is not affected by the, by, the, by the diameter. So if you have enough brightness and if you have enough resolution, then you don't need a bigger optics. You might, the only reason for going to bigger optics might be that you don't get enough light anymore. But then you, maybe getting a bet, finding a better location might be the easier approach. Yeah. Yeah. With the crescent, you have... Uh, two dimensions, you have the length of the crescent, which would not be affected too much by the seeing, and you also have the thinness or the thickness of the uh, crescent, which would be affected. And this was one of Derek McNally's uh, considerations. Uh, he 
thought definitely seeing would affect the thickness, and as the horns get thinner, they would disappear. So one of the things that he asks me for almost every one of my observations is, you know, what was the length of the crescent? And does it grow or shrink as it gets closer to the horizon or as the contrast changes and so forth? And I can almost never give him enough data from the observations because just conditions aren't good enough to make those measurements. So the question is, if the crescent um, can we still uh, capture it on a simple webcam? Um, right, this situation can arise where we cannot see by the naked eye, but we can see on the telescope only. Um, uh, I simply don't know uh, this answer, but I expect that we would first use the various filtering in front of the camera um, to improve the contrast, and uh, then um, we may have to go to a bigger chip to increase the resolution, because this quarter, it might uh, exceed the quarter-inch chip's capacity to get too thin, then it gets pixelated. I think Martin can uh, add on that. Okay, that's another question. Do you, you mentioned that first you tried sighted by the, your own eye, or is it naked? And then after that, you try to use a, the webcam, you plug it into the telescope, right? Right. So normally, the focus in order to, to capture the image by the webcam is different than the focus to see it by your human eye. Do you have some sort of adapter ad, for this type of adjustment? You just <coughs> remove this eyepiece, plug this adapter, and then the webcam to speed up the process? Um, Yes, uh, we, um, having uh, located the uh, Hilal, we put uh, the uh, webcam on it, and then there is a control panel uh, on the computer which allows us to in increase the gain, reduce the sh shutter speed to get the optimum focus on it. Oh, okay, and this can, uh, can be done within a few seconds. But you don't have specific adapter. Or maybe the adapter, the, the, adapter, the adapter only fits into the telescope. Okay, so it's integrated to the webcam, maybe. Um, you unscrew the webcam lens and put the adapter to put it on the. Yeah. I've got it in. Back. I can show you later on. Okay, great. Thank you. 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 Thank <تصفيق> نعم اللي هو تكلم عنه يعني اللي نرى انه في الحسابات بالنسبه للتقاويم اللي هم يعملوها في اوروبا انه هم يعملون حسب برنامج خاص نعم اه بالنسبة للحسابات الفلكية اللي مارتين هو تكلم خاصة بالنسبة للتلسكوبات وهذه الأشياء إنه هل هو لها حالات خاصة ولا يعني لكل الحالات يعني يستعمل هذه التلسكوبات لأن إحنا بالنسبة للتقييمات اللي يعمل في أوروبا إنهم برنامج خاص يعني يعملوها برمجة نظرية لسنوات قادمة لا فيها تلسكوبات ولا هذه الأشياء كلها برنا يعني برامج خاصة هم يعملوها لسنوات يعني كل كلها نظريات لكن هل ال... هم اللي يرون ب... يعني رأوا بالتلسكوبات هذه بس حالات خاصة ولا يعملوها مرات أو يعني اللي إحنا سنا في الأنواع الجوية كلها يقول إنه برامج نظرية يعملوها لسنوات لسنوات قادمة لا يهتمون بال الأنواع الجوية ولا ب... إذا شافوا القمر ولا الولادة مثلاً طيب بالنسبة للحسابات المستقبلية إذا فهمتك صح تقصد بها التقاويم في التقاويم وضع التقويم يكون حاط في باله معيار معين من ضمن معايير المعروفة الكثيرة معايير يالو عودة إلى غير ذلك المعايير فهو يكون حاط في باله مستخدم معيار معين محدد على ضوء ذلك المعيار يحدد بل الشهر إذا تحقق الشرط حسب المعيار يبدأ الشهر وإلى غير ذلك لا يبدأ بالنسبة للأرصاد طبعا الغلاف الجوي والسحب والغبار والى غير ذلك ما ممكن حد يتنبا به في احسن تقدير ممكن تعرف الفصل في فصل الصيف يكسر الغبار مثلا في فصل الشتاء تكسر السحب لكن ما تستطيع تبني 
او نموذج يخبرك بالتقلبات في الطقس بعد ستة اشهر من الان هل بيكون في الجو في سحب او لا تكون في الجو سحب فعادة مواضيع التقويم يستخدموا معيار معين ممكن مقتنعين به او بالتشاور مع الجهات الشرعيه والرسميه ويتفق على هذا المعيار او ربما ايضا يستعين بما جرت عليه العاده سابقا ايش اقرب المعايير للارصاد التي تمت اعتمادها سابقا ويعتبر ك كمرجعيه نظريه يرجع عليها في وضع التقويم هل يا بكافيه وباغي الشرح اكثر طيب اعتقد اول شيء نشكر الشيخ طيب لو لو سمحت الميكروفون بسرعه لان اخر دقيقه هزال سمحت الصف الثاني هل ممكن استعمال تلسكوب هابل اللي هو خارج الغلاف الجوي استعمال في برامج خاصة بتصوير أو بتصوير يعني الهلال عند نشأته أنا ما ما أعرف بالنسبة للتلسكوب هابل هو حقيقة تلسكوب كبير جدا ضخم وفي أجهزة حساسة جدا للغاية فلا توجه عادة إلى إلى رصد الهلال قريب من الشمس فهو غير عمليا ما جيد لذلك الغرض ما مصمم لذلك الغرض شيء ثاني أن معظم الحين الفقهاء لا يروا الاعتماد على الأقمار الصناعية باستقلالها عن الأرض في كأداة لتحرير رؤية الهلال لم لم يحصل على التأييد الكافي فلذلك البرنامج متوقف في البداية وفي النهاية عفوا نختم جميع المتحدثين ونشكركم وجميع الأشخاص اللي شاركونا في هذا الطرح وهذا النقاش البناء والحين في أختام هذه الجلسة وقبل استراحة الصلاة وهكذا حول الميكروفون للمهندس محمد عودة حتى يعطيكم بالتنبيهات الأخيرة والتعديلات